And what's funny about these puppets, these charlatans, these wicked men in, in positions of great power, they claim, in many cases, not in all, to be Christians. You'll see the video footage of them going to church or carrying a Bible with them or whatever. It's a facade. It's a joke. But people are so ignorant today, they think that just because they see someone hold a bowl, they just must be a righteous, oh wow, they actually, they go to church, so they must be a God-fearing man. They must love the Lord. They must be just like you and me, and it's Christian, and they want to do what's right by God's eyes. Just because someone claims the name of the Lord doesn't mean they really believe in Him. Doesn't mean they really, just because they carry around a book doesn't mean they actually believe what the book says. Why don't you just look at their actions and look at their deeds when you consider whether or not they really believe that this book is true. 2 Kings chapter 3, look at verse number 11. The Bible says, But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Now, of course, in this situation, Jehoshaphat is not right. Jehoshaphat's leaguing up and joining himself up with wicked rulers and wicked kings. Jehoshaphat himself was actually a godly king. He was, he was a righteous ruler. He was doing that which was right in general in the eyes of the Lord. He was trying to stand for God, but he made affinity with the house of Ahab. He joined up with him. He married his daughter or whatever and, and, and became in-laws with the house of Ahab. And then he decided, hey, you know, your, your people, like our people, doesn't matter that you're wicked as hell. We're just going to fight your battles for you. We're going to come in and we are all for you. And, and here he is now yoked up with the wicked king of Israel and also with the king of Edom. And they're going to fight. And he's saying, hey, before we go and do this, let's go get counsel from the Lord. And of course, they had all their yes men. All their, their Baal worshiping. You know, they call themselves prophets of the Lord. But they didn't actually have the word of the Lord. And they're all saying, yeah, God's with you. Go, you're going to win. You're doing great, you know. And he's like, can we uh, find someone else? Can we find a different prophet of the Lord to just, you know, <laughs> that we could hear from? Hear, hear what the Lord has to say about this. And they're like, well, there's Elisha's here. They're like, yes, get him. Elisha's a great man of God. Joshua recognizes that. He's like, yeah, go get that man of God. He tells it like it is. And Elisha comes, and look at Elisha's attitude. Elisha is a great man of God, by the way. He is, he is what, probably one of the greatest men of God to have ever walked this earth. And look at his attitude towards the king, towards the, the person in charge of Israel, right? The king of Israel, nonetheless. God's people, Israel. Look how he, he talks to the king of Israel. Look at verse number 13. The Bible says, And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What have I to do with thee? What? what? I've got no business with you. I don't even want to talk to you. What are you doing here? This is his answer to him. <laughs> 